So I'm very grateful to be here and to be able to talk about this research. I'm grateful to have been invited by ANL Canada Labs. Uh, and what I am going to try to do is to convince you that uh, plants are actually cultivating the microbes, and that's, that's the reason these soil microbes are so important. They're cultivating these microbes just like we cultivate the plants. So, and that's, the, that's actually the hidden activity that, that, we're, that all of this data and this kind of results are pointing to is the fact that the plants actually use microbes. And uh, so that microbial association is, is very important. And further, that uh, the plants are cultivating these microbes for the purpose of extracting nutrients from the microbes. Okay, they're using the microbes as carriers of soil nutrients. Okay, now I'm going to see if this works. Yes. Okay, so these microbes are uh, endophytic microbes. And we're, an endophyte is actually any microbe, usually it's a bacterium or a fungus that goes into plant tissues. So my whole career I've worked on these endophytic microbes. And uh, where some of you may be familiar with endophytes, they're in the grasses, in turf grasses, for example. Uh, and in some cases, forage grasses. And when they're in the forage grasses, they tend to be toxic to animals that consume those, those grasses. But actually, we're talking about, in the grasses, we're talking about one kind of endophyte. It happens to be a fungal endophyte. And this actually shows a hypha of the fungus. This is a, a fungus that uh, goes in, for example, tall fescue and perennial ryegrass and fine fescues. And these endophytes grow in between the cells. And you can see the cells here in the background, the plant cells, and you can see the hypha of the fungus right there. Okay, so any microbe that grows in plant tissue is, uh, is considered an endophyte. And uh, there uh, can actually be uh, all kinds of endophytes. In fact, plants, all plants carry endophytes. There's not a plant in nature that doesn't have endophytic microbes in them. Okay, endophytes are everywhere. And uh, they're unseen, typically. And what I'll do is to show you some of these endophytes and talk about a process that they're uh, engaged in inside plants. Okay, so endophytes, uh, they are intracellular, which means they go inside the cells, okay? They can go intercellular, which means they go between the cells, okay? So they can really permeate a plant throughout the tissues and the cells of that plant. The endophytes are known to improve the stress tolerance, so disease resistance in plants, also salt tolerance, for example, heat tolerance, all kinds of abiotic stresses and biotic stresses. Uh, they will uh, some of these endophytes, particularly bacterial endophytes, are known to uh, go outside of the plant and go and colonize pathogenic microbes in the soil and then uh, make those pathogenic microbes non-pathogenic. They'll essentially uh, uh, draw nutrients out of those fungi and make them so they can't cause disease. They'll be avirulent. Um, okay, so they also will modulate root development, and they will, they will make it so that they essentially are controlling development of, the, of plant roots. Okay, and you saw that with some of Dr. Saldia's photographs. You saw the, with the, uh, the potato plants, with the uh, microbes there, and you saw how much root material was there, and there's also a lot of leaf material there. Okay, so this is kind of controlling development of the plant. Uh, they will also improve nutrient absorption. Okay, so the, these microbes are directly involved in getting those nutrients and bringing them back to the plant. Okay, so they have all these benefits, really. 
Uh, one, of the, one of the nice things that I get to do is because I'm working on plants, all, all kinds of different plants all over the world, so sometimes I get to go to some really cool places and study the plants. Okay, so this is actually a plant uh, from the desert island of Bonaire. And uh, this is a big cactus here called the Kadushi cactus. The fruits are way up here, these little black dots up there. You can't see them out there. But if you open those fruits and pull out the seeds, they're like this. And when those seeds are germinated, they make a little seedling. And this is under aseptic conditions, so they're pretty clean. Uh, this is a seedling shoot of that cactus, the root of the cactus here. And uh, if you look inside that root with a microscope, these are the root hairs. These are the hairs of that cactus. And you can see these little black dots, the little black things in here. These are the bacteria that are inside those roots and inside those root cells. So these bacteria actually endophytes. They actually go into cells of the plant. But they're not throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. Instead, they tend to be just in this uh, external area here but just underneath the cell wall. And see, here's a close-up of that. You can see these bacteria that have just divided. They're in little pairs there, uh, just dividing in there. But and you can also kind of see they're on the outside here. So they're not underneath the membrane in the cytoplasm. They're just underneath the wall kind of there. So that, that actually uh, is called the periplasmic space. But they're technically inside the cells still. So some Queensland, Australia investigators uh, observed this same phenomenon back in 2010. And uh, they were doing some work with some tomato plants and working with yeast and working with bacteria. And what they showed is that their bacteria and their yeasts go inside those cells. And uh, this actually shows some images of that. You can see a hair here and you see those little uh, green dots. What they did is they labeled their yeast and their bacteria with green fluorescent protein so that it would fluoresce green. And so that's the green inside those cells. Here you can see it too inside the root cells. They called this process actually rhizophagy. Rhizophagy, rhizo for root, phagy for eating. And uh, that basically conveys the concept that these roots, these plants, are eating microbes. So plants are eating microbes. That's the concept that they were conveying. Um, and uh, the, they wrote a paper called Turning the Table, Plants Consume Microbes as a Source of Nutrients. Okay, so they really described this initial process. Oops, I'm not going the right way. What we have found over the years is that actually it tends not to be a one-way trip. Microbes don't go in, get degraded, uh, but instead uh, microbes are going in. They're going into the root cells. They're stimulating root hair development, and they're coming back out. They're actually being pushed back out of the root hairs. As those hairs elongate, the microbes are basically squirt out of those elongating root hairs. They go back into the soil, and they'll get nutrients. And then they're attracted back to a zone here where the plant is secreting nutrients. And then they'll be internalized into those cells. They'll actually uh, lose their cell walls. They'll form protoplasts. And, uh, uh, then uh, eventually they'll trigger hair development again. Okay, so there's a cycle, and we called it the rhizophagy cycle. So these microbes are going through the roots entirely. They're going and back to the soil and so forth, and so it's a continual thing. The plants are actually extracting nutrients from the microbes uh, once they go inside the cells, and they're extracting those nutrients by producing superoxide, reactive oxygen. 
which basically digests some of the microbes and so they can get the nutrients out of them and it also creates leakage in the, in the membranes of the microbes. Okay, so this is a, a root hair and you can see a little light area coming out there. Those are bacteria that are being ejected from that hair. So uh, a lot of these microbes are actually carried on the seed or in the seed. And so most seeds will carry uh, three or four, five different species of microbes, and those microbes will function in the seedling. Uh, but the plant also is taking these microbes out of the soil. So it's recruiting, we call it recruiting, but another way to think it, it's fishing microbes, fishing the microbes it likes from the soil. And uh, so the plant, you know, I'm, the way I'm saying this, I'm trying to, you know, put the image that this plant is intentionally my, cultivating microbes uh, for its own purpose. Okay, this is a grass seed, a tall fescue seed germinating, and uh, you can see the root here, and some of the hairs coming out there, and shoot is coming in from here, uh, and uh, you see this little pigment, pigmented area in here. That's actually bacteria that come out of that seed, and those bacteria are colonizing that that root, uh, and so those are microbes carried on the surface of the seed. Okay, once the root comes out, this is an illustration of a root. You can see the root tip here, and you see this right behind the root tip are the, is this exudate zone, and this is actually where the plant is cultivating microbes. It's secreting exudates, nutrients into this zone to cultivate those microbes, and it's internalizing microbes right there at the, just beneath where those microbes are, taking them into the root cells. This is an actual image that shows a root. In this case, it's a Phragmites, it's invasive reed grass. Uh, and uh, this is the root here. Uh, the, you can see this area here is where the meristem is in there. All these are microbes out here in this exudate zone. This is where the Plants are cultivating those. Those little blue dots are all the microbes there. So it is, the plant is taking those microbes in right there at that surface. Okay, and that close up of that is here. And you can see the microbes out there, and you can see microbes right here on the surface where they're being internalized. Okay, and what happens once they're internalized? the plant will secrete superoxide onto them, and superoxide is highly potent, and it'll strip the cell walls off of those bacteria. And so this actually shows this going on. This is, uh, this is the uh, microbes with uh, cell walls here, and you can see the rods. And then inside, reactive oxygen superoxide hits them, and then they lose their cell walls, and they form these little protoplasts like this. You can see these, and they, these protoplasts bud and they have no cell walls on them. Uh, they'll be all different shapes and sizes. Uh, and inside the plant, actually, some of these older ones will break down, and so the nutrients will be lost entirely from them, but they keep replicating like this. And so these continue to grow inside the plant, actually. This shows a root, and this is stained for superoxide. You can see the hairs out here. You can see this blue stain. This is this was actually, blue stain detects the superoxide. So these are concentrations of where bacteria are out here and uh, the superoxide staining. So you can actually see where the superoxide is located. This is a close-up of a hair. Uh, you can see these little blue dots in here. Those are our protoplasts of our bacteria in there that the plant is digesting, actually, inside the, inside the root. There you see another one. You can see all those little blue dots. Uh, so I, I'm showing a lot of pictures uh, to, so that you can see for yourself what's actually going on. You have a concept of these plants consuming, taking in these microbes. So we use another stain that stains for another form of reactive oxygen. And the stain is, uh, we call it DAB, but wherever there's hydrogen peroxide, it will, it will make this brown pigment. 
uh, and so the hydrogen peroxide comes right after the superoxide, so we can actually see the microbes because of that. Okay, this is a root cell again, and uh, you can see the these are actually the, the protoplasts of the bacteria. This is a pseudomonas in this case inside this root cell. And you can also see uh, there's a, a chain of them, a line of them. You see an older one here, more clear, and then you see the youngest ones that are blue. The blue is where this protein. So these older ones are being degraded and broken down. F nutrients are being extracted fully from them. Okay, so what the superoxide does is it will, uh, these are microbes here, it will make these membranes leak. And so the proteins will go out and the proteins will break down and so they'll become clear. But the younger ones, you can see how blue they are. Okay, those are full of proteins. So you can see the, see the difference there. So fungi also go into, into these plant roots. Some fungi, typically yeasts, will go in. And uh, this is one of these little plants that has a yeast endophyte in it. Uh, the yeast is a black yeast. You can just see it here. Uh, it also has bacteria in it. We'll look at that. But the fungi will essentially make these protoplasts just the same as the bacteria. And this shows it. Uh, this protoplasts that, go, that are inside, you can see they're budding, little budding stage, stages in there. This was described a couple of years, a few years ago now, 2014, by some uh, California uh, investigators that uh, found that, that the endophyte, the yeast, turn into these protoplast stages. Okay, so fungi do it too, so it's not just bacteria. This actually shows a plant, a plant root cells here, some, some, some cells in the root. These are the fungal protoplasts in this cell. It's full of them. These are the bacterial protoplasts. So you have plants that have these internalized fungi and bacteria. So, and there'll be multiples in the same plant. So it's not just one. Um, the cycle and these microbes going inside is very important because they trigger development of the plant. And without these microbes, plants don't develop properly. For example, if we remove all the microbes from plant seedlings, the roots will not grow down. They won't show the proper gravitropic response. Instead, they may grow into the air, or they, so roots sticking in the air, that's not normal. Roots staying on the surface of the, of the medium or the soil, that's not normal. So the roots are supposed to grow down. Without microbes, they don't grow down. Also, uh, their uh, microbes will trigger root hair elongation. Okay, if we remove all the microbes, we don't get root hairs forming on plants. Those microbes have to be in there for root hairs to develop properly. Okay, this is a Bermuda grass seedling, and uh, this is without microbes. And you can see the, the, this is near the tip of the root, and this is a bit older tissue. You can see there's little stubs there, but there's not really any hair development in that in that uh, root. Okay, this is Bermuda grass with, uh, actually with uh, Pseudomonas put on it, uh, one of the bacteria, and you can see right away hairs have formed. Immediately you get hair formation. And uh, this is underneath the, uh, near the meristem, cells of the root, young cells of the root, and you can actually see in here the bacteria that have gone inside those cells, these little rods. When they first go in, they still have their cell walls. Later on, they lose those cell walls. Okay, this shows a root, a Bermuda grass root again, and uh, you can see the root hairs here, you see the little brown dots. All those brown dots are the bacteria inside those inside those uh, root hairs, little dots there. These roots are loaded with bacteria internal, internal. This shows a root hair from uh, one of those plants, and you can see the little spherical structures. Those are the protoplasts inside that root hair. So these cells, plant cells, just become filled with these microbes. This is tomato, tomato, all as, 
As far as we know, all plants do this. All plants that have root hairs will internalize microbes into them and will use them for, nu for nutritional, nutritional um, uh, supplementation. Uh, tomato uh, is a plant that we've done some work with. And tomato seeds, you take them out of tomato fruit, and they contain, those seeds already contain endophytes. And this is one of those. This actually shows the root hair from a seedling. And you can see there's little brown things in there. Those are actually, that's an endophytic bacterium called Micrococcus. And it forms these little tetrad, tetrad or groups of four clusters. And you can see them here from culture. You see the little four uh, multiple cells together there forming those clusters. So that's characteristic. So we can track this. Because it forms these distinctive cells, we can track it through plants. And so we can see the changes as it goes through the plants. OK, so one experiment we did with uh, this tomato endophyte is we put it in various other seedlings. We removed all the microbes off the other seedlings, uh, seeds, and then we put micrococcus on it and tracked it through the plants. And one of them was uh, the, this curly dock, Rumex, crisp, Rumex crispus, which is a very common weed that you're all familiar with. Uh, but it makes a good experimental plant. And this actually is the uh, Rumex crispus uh, root tip area, root cells around the root. And you can see the, the cells here. And uh, it, this one was inoculated with the bacterium. And you can see inside those cells, you can see those little tetrads where the bacteria have been internalized into those cells. This is uh, the same cell area of the seedling that was not inoculated. You see there's nothing, nothing in there. This is a, a little bit bigger mag of that just to show uh, the Rumex. And you can see the micrococcus cells are really in there. They're, they're in each of those cells. Um, initially the bacteria keep their cell walls. But very shortly, they're hit with superoxide, and they lose those cell walls, and they form these little spherical protoplasts. And this actually shows these protoplasts. You can see they're, they're uh, forming chains there where they're budding. They're in the, and they're actually in the space outside the membrane. You can tell that here, because you can kind of see the membrane there. You see the cell wall out there, and you see these microbe protoplasts out here. Uh, outside that membrane. So they're out, outside the membrane, but in those cells. This shows a root hair, and you can see the protoplasts in that, that root hair there, too. You can see they're, they're loaded with those microbe protoplasts. There's another image. You can see, the, you can see them there. OK, so this actually is a cell. And it's a uh, plant cell. And all these little dots, those are actually protoplasts of that bacterium. And you can see here, in some cases, they'll reform their walls while they're still inside. And this actually, you can see a tetrad forming here. One, two, three, four cells there. They're redeveloping bacteria inside. Uh, this also, that shows that. And this is just from culture, so you can compare to those tetrads internally. So what happens uh, is the, these microbes are squirt or ejected from the root hairs. As those hairs elongate, they will eject periodically those protoplasts from the root hairs, from the tips of the root hairs. And then what happens is the protoplasts, the bacteria, will reform their cell walls because the plant will follow the, the, micro, the micro ejection of the microbes with nutrients that go right out those hairs. And then the, the microbes rebuild their walls and go back out into the soil and proliferate and gather nutrients in the soil. But this shows hairs when you can see clusters of, of uh, of protoplasts ejected from those hairs. This shows a hair. And you can see here at the tip, this is where they're being ejected. You can see some little brown structures here. This is where the microbes are coming out. 
and they're falling off, they're redeveloping, they're falling off, and you see them here falling off the side of that, of that hair. And they're more mature here, they're bigger here, they're more developed. So the young, the plant squirts nutrients out after them to rebuild them. So they go get more nutrients. That's just a close-up of one of those tips, and you can see the microbes reforming there. You can see kind of uh, grooves or pores where they go through that hair tip back to the soil. This shows a young hair, and you can see the microbes coming out. They're real densely staining here, and they're little tetrads, and you see where they fall off, and they're bigger, much bigger, as they redevelop their size and walls and so forth. That's just a close-up. You can see the young ones there and the older ones there. So uh, this actually is a root, grass root. You can see the tip here. There's actually microbes all around this tip. You can kind of see it's kind of diffuse around there, a lot of microbes there. And you can see the root hairs forming here. So what, what is the function of a plant root hair? We all know since sixth grade science class that root hairs absorb nutrients from the soil and the plant then takes it in and so you get nutrients. But there's another function of root hairs with respect to this rhizophagy cycle and that is these root hairs actually will extend the microbes out into the rhizosphere. You know, rather than just depositing, depositing them right here on the surface where they can't get new nutrients, it extends them out and deposits them out here. You can see some hairs here. You can see this fluorescent cluster here. Those are all bacteria that have been squirted out of those hairs. This is actually a hair of a, one of the little grasses, an annual bluegrass. And you can see bacteria coming out right there at the tip and the little spherical structures inside the little dots in there, which are the protoplast stages inside those hairs. So what we think is happening for ejection is that as these uh, hairs are elongating, uh, when they make an elongation spurt, they squirt the microbes out into the soil. And this just shows here uh, what's happening. This is a hair. Uh, it's actually the hair, the protoplast is like a cone. And so these, these microbes are actually conveyed around in what we call cyclosis. So it's an active process. The, the plant is moving these microbes around. It's breaking them up into little bits. So you get lots of them, replicating them. And then they're accumulating here at the tip. And then when that hair elongates, it pushes those microbes out into the soil. So I'll, sh I'll show you that in a, in a moment. Okay, this is the sedge. This is one of the little, this one grows on rocks with almost no nutrients at all, but it has lots of these microbes in it. And uh, this is one of the hairs of the sedges. So uh, these little red areas here, those are the microbes out there. So they're outside on the outside of that cell. And th then we have this cyclosis, this churning of the cytoplasm that happens. And these, basically the cytoplasm just moves like this and moves those microbes around, constantly moving them moving them around like that and also breaking them apart, making clusters where there was one, it breaks them into many small ones. So it's actually replicating internally these microbes. And you can see the clusters, the clusters there. The big ones are old, the small ones are young. And this is one of those hairs again. You can see how swollen it is here on the tip. You can see all the microbe protoplasts in there. You can see where the, the you can see the bacteria accumulating out here. You can see these little things there. They're forming, reforming their walls here. So these hairs are just ejecting these microbes out back into the soil. And this is a little uh, moving image of a hair, and you can actually see the the cyclosis, the streaming of those microbes. You see these little white things, those are actually the microbes, the bacteria in there. You can see they're clustering right there at the tip, accumulating right there. They're moving around. So it's just this constant. So root hairs are not this static thing that we think of, but instead they're very active uh, with all this cellular activity. They're managing these microbes internally. They're breaking them up. Uh, they're hitting them with reactive oxygen. They're making them leak. 
We think that the movement, besides breaking the microbes into bits and increasing into smaller cells and increasing their numbers, we think that movement also decreases the, uh, the gradient that would develop. If it was static, you would have a gradient you know, from high concentration on one, it would go all the way across to a lower concentration, which would slow the movement of nutrients between the microbe and the plant. But because it's moving like that, it's constantly breaking down that gradient. So it's the maximum rate of, of absorption of nutrients from those microbes. So, okay, so it's, at some point, uh, when this hair begins to grow, it would then expand, and then those microbes would be ejected through pores there. And we, all, we ha actually have images of that ejection, but I don't have it here uh, because oftentimes when I have these too many movies in here, it crashes the, the presentation, and that's a little bit embarrassing when it does that. Uh, but I do have this still, and you can see a hair, and you can see uh, these darker areas are where microbes have been ejected from the hair. And you can see it's not continuous, but here there's an ejection, here there was ejection, here's some ejection, or maybe it was here, and then it was here, and it was here. Uh, so it's periodic, and we think it's as a growth spurt happens, the microbes go out. So you may be familiar with the work that's going on now um, where people are reporting that within, in experiments that they're doing with carbon dioxide, putting carbon dioxide on crops, uh, and then they're measuring the nutrients in those crops, like wheat, for example, they're finding that when there's more carbon dioxide put on the crop, uh, nutrients are missing from the crops. They have less nutrients, like, for example, iron, zinc, and proteins are less. And uh, that actually relates to this process, we think. And uh, so this actually shows one of these experimental, these, ca these carbon dioxide uh, application experiments. And what they do here, actually, this is, a, I guess this is wheat or corn or something, I can't really tell. Uh, but they put the carbon dioxide gas around it so that it falls out into this area and uh, gives a certain concentration in the in the, in the crop, but that carbon dioxide is heavy, so it falls down to the soil, and it goes in the soil, air spaces in the soil, and it concentrates in high concentrations, and it's having effects. And what we think is happening, it is uh, reducing the amount of nutrients that plants can actually get from uh, microbes. And we think what's happening is the carbon dioxide, we've shown what's happening is the carbon dioxide is uh, inhibiting superoxide that the plants produce to break down those, uh, those microbes. And uh, it, that essentially stops this whole rhizophagy process. Okay, and uh, our experiments have involved little chambers like this, um, seedlings like that on agarose. And we, put the, we have chambers where we elevate the carbon dioxide and we have chambers where we leave just regular air and then we germinate those seedlings in there uh, after a week or two weeks, three weeks in some cases. And this is actually tall fescue, tall fescue grass. Uh, this is regular air, and you can see all these root hairs there, and you can see purple this is stained for, uh, actually for superoxide. You can see there's superoxide out there in the root tip. This is the non-elevated, so that's regular air. But when we elevate it, put carbon dioxide there, you see this. You see there's no purple there, this is stained. There's no purple on the outside. There's a tiny bit of purple in the center. So we've suppressed the carbon, the, uh, the superoxide around the periphery. And you also see no hairs, or very few hairs. So we're repressing uh, the, the hair elongation by repressing those microbes. Okay, this just shows a little bit later on. This is the elevated. You can see there's short hairs there, so there's not no hairs, but it's short hairs. This is compared to the regular air. And both were stained for superoxide. You see no purple out there. There's no microbes out there, or very few microbes out there. Okay, there in the regular air, you see there's plenty of microbes there. We did the same experiment, similar experiment, actually, with wheat, wheat crop. And uh, uh, very similarly done 
Uh, this actually is in regular air, and you can see the regular in the regular air, you see the little dots in there. All those are microbes in there, the bacteria are present inside those root hairs. Okay, this is the same regular air, regular level of carbon dioxide. You can see there's microbes in there, but you also see these are fat. These are fat, those are fat with microbes. This is without microbes. This is with an elevated, and you don't see any microbes there, and you can see these are little skinny, uh, more tapering, narrow root hairs. This is actually the shape of the protoplast of that root hair. So what makes it fat is that there's so many microbes around that protoplast. So it, uh, it's a notable. The other thing you can notice is that um, this is the, the elevated CO2. And if you, we look at these, we can actually see little rods in there. Here too, you can see little rods in there. So what's happened is the bacteria go in the cell but without superoxide, it doesn't turn to protoplast. So we're essentially um, stopping this process. And so you get no replication in there. It affects plant development and everything. The microbes cannot be degraded, essentially, without superoxide. OK, so this is in soil, or rather potting mix, instead of on agarose. So it's a little bit more relevant. Same experiments. Uh, with elevated and regular air. And you can see this is actually regular air, and you can see the roots of that wheat. You can see there's soil adhering to it. There's, uh, there's actually a lot of microbial activity in here, and uh, the, the, the plant secretes lots of exudate out there, and between the microbes and the exudate, all that soil sticks to the, to the roots. This is in the elevated, and you can see the roots here. Uh, you can, there's actually few hairs here. You don't see hairs. There's little exudate there. No exudate or very little exudate. There's a little bit here and there, but uh, the roots don't develop as well. And the soil relationship is greatly affected. Here, with lots of microbes, regular air, you get a good soil relationship. Here, it's, it's a poor relationship. This is a close-up of the root, and uh, this is regular air, and you can see the root hairs on that. Uh, and uh, this is the elevated now, and you can see there's no hairs or the occasional hair. They're very, very short. And uh, I have other images of this where you see all the soil particles adhering to it. So it really affects development if you, if you don't have those microbes there, if you suppress this cycle and replication of the microbes. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a big difference without the microbes. Tomato, it's the same deal with tomato. Same experiment. Uh, here you can see in regular air, you can see these root hairs. They're brown. And you can see little dots in there. Those are all the microbes, the fat root hairs with lots of microbes. Uh, and this is in the elevated carbon dioxide. Uh, these hairs, what I don't show is these hairs also are very short. They're very short, and you don't see any microbes in those hairs. I mean, there probably was some in there, but development uh, is not good without those microbes in there. Certainly shorter hairs, and uh, the whole rhizophagy cycle is paralyzed. So with the tomato experiment, we measured some nutrients, and uh, uh, this is elevated treatment here, this blue, the blue bars and the orange bars are one of the controls. This is regular air, and this is uh, non-elevated, also another control, the, the yellow one. So if you, and this is a potassium, and you can see controls are here, way up here for potassium, and this is the, in the shoots, for potassium in the shoot. And you can see here, for the high CO2, elevated CO2, it's way low, it reduced potassium entry into the shoots. Uh, we also see a difference uh, here with the calcium. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is actually the elevated. You see less in the elevated and more in the, you know, we've only begun these kind of nutritional experiments, so we don't have a lot of data here for this yet. Uh, and here, sulfur also was a, a similar response. Low here, 
uh, high in those controls, so we think there's a suppression of sulfur absorption when we paralyze the, uh, the rhizophagy cycle. Um, so what happens to plants without this cycle completely? Uh, if you deprive them of microbes, um, we did an experiment. This is, this, is, this is rice in this case. And this is, we, what we did is we took the seeds, we removed all the microbes off of the seeds, uh, and uh, we germinated in potting mix. And this is with no microbes placed on the seeds. You see they're really short. We call it E minus, endophyte minus. Then we put Pseudomonas endophyte on there. And you can see those seedlings are much, much bigger. Uh, and this is seedlings a couple of weeks later. Uh, this is with the endophyte, with the Pseudomonas endophyte. And you can see the same kind of, you can see a nice root development there. You can see lots of soil adhering to it. Uh, there also, and this is the E minus. You can see these were just pulled out. You can see little soil adhering. There's also no root hairs or few or very short root hairs in these. Okay, so what are, um, you know, there's a lot of take homes here, uh, or at least some take homes. One is that plants uh, really are, uh, they really appear to be, I can't say they really are, but they really appear to be farming microbes. So those microbes in the soil are important to plants. They likely are selecting the ones that they like, that give them the most benefit. And those that aren't beneficial, they're probably not taking in. Um, also, uh, one uh, important take home is that seeds, we frequently will clean seeds uh, and put fungicide coatings on them or We'll remove all the microbes off of them by some surface sterilants, or we'll remove the husks on seeds. But actually, those carry, uh, carry microbes. And so when we do that, we put the seedling at a disadvantage right away, uh, early on. And so we do have to then put fungicides all over it and so forth to keep it so we can grow it, because other, otherwise pathogens will get it. Um, No-till is probably a good practice, especially if you're doing like deep turning of soil where you go down deep where there's no microbes and turn that soil and then you have exposed now soil at the, where the plants are gonna start growing where there's few microbes, where the microbial community has been diminished entirely. So that's probably not a good idea. Um, also, uh, it makes sense to manage crops in a more, uh, in, a, in a way that you're now trying to uh, support plant growth, but also support the microbial growth, uh, my, microbes that are associated with those plants. Okay, so it's a little bit more uh, involved uh, in terms of you know, management. You're now looking at more of an ecology management. And, uh, you know, I think that's all I have to say, and I'm so sorry I didn't go a whole hour.